is Adam from Blue Line. It's starting to cool off a little bit outside here, and if you're anything like me, that means that you are really worked up about the thought of streamer fishing coming up. So, figured we wanted to tie a streamer for you guys today. We get a ton of requests from you guys for tying some streamers. I wanted to tie something that was a little bit different, uh, with that had a stinger hook on it, so that you also kind of got to see how we did that. So, follow along, we're going to tie a, a fly that's kind of similar. It's my take on the Sculptzilla. Pow. Are you saying pow? What are you saying? So we're going to start this fly out with a stinger hook. This is going to be my favorite. It's the A-Rex XO series. Um, this one's a size 6. We just found out. So uh, all we're going to do to this one is attach the zonker tail. So we're going to just start our thread. It's we. I'm not even going to dress most of the hook. I'm just going to start it right here at the front. And I'm going to be tying a zonker tail end. This is a natural, you hear it called grizzly, or sometimes you'll even see it uh, labeled as chinchilla uh, colors. It's kind of like a frosted uh, gray underneath with more of like some dark gray or black tips. Really like this stuff. This is one of my go-to color patterns for uh, trout. So before we get going, I like to use my little dubbing, or my, uh, my brush and brush out that strip just makes it look nice and thick. We're we'll flip this guy over, and I'm gonna take the very end of the tail here, and this fly does ride hook side up, so we want it to show that. And we're gonna just barely put this leather over the tip of where I tied in, and we're just gonna tie it in about right here. And the biggest thing that we want to make sure we're doing is getting our hair on the front on either side of that hook like that. Next switch over to the bodkin or the dubbing needle. I like to just go right where I'm going to put those thread wraps. Just down to the leather. You don't have to pierce the leather but just down to the leather so that I can expose it so that I can get a good tie-in point. And wetting your fingers just a little bit will help also hold all that back. And you definitely don't want to do this too close to the eye of the hook. We want to be just a little further back from the hook eye for this. So I'm pull that back and actually get a couple thread wraps where I'm in <clears throat> right behind the hook eye where I'm not actually even on the leather. And we're just going to come in a whip finish right there. And we're done with the rear. We've got a piece of backing. So this is just standard fly line or fly line Dacron backing. Um, if you don't have any spare, I'll, I end up having a couple spools. I use it in black and white quite a bit. But if you don't have any, run in your local fly shop. I'm sure they'll give you a couple piece of a couple feet of backing for free that you can just spool up on your desk. Uh, love having this stuff around to do these articulations with. So we're going to grab this backing, double it over, run it through the top of the hook, pull it around all the material, and just cinch that down. And I like to put the edge of that right on the back side of the hook as you can see here I don't like to fold it over on the front I just feel like it has a little bit better grip that way it doesn't kink as bad and there we have it so because this I, if we were having the hook ride the other way I would have the line go the opposite way where it would come out the bottom but we are gonna run this hook point up so I've got my my running line coming out the top and we're going to articulate that. Of course, you could do another hook, but we're going to articulate to a shank. So I've got my vise here that'll accept shanks. When I'm starting a shank, I like to put just a dot of glue on the shank there so that it will uh, kind of help bind those two together.
I'm gonna start wrapping forward on the top of it, rearwards, then reach below, pull it down. We're gonna go ahead and fully dress that. So the next step is to articulate this fly to our rear hook. So go ahead and measure out how far back you want your rear hook to be, just determining how long the fly is gonna be. We're gonna make sure that this backing is flat. And we're gonna split the backing over that end of the shank right here. So I like to just measure it out on my vise. I kind of know how, how long I want this fly to be based on where I put that rear hook on my vise. And just get a couple of looser thread wraps here so that you can still manipulate this uh, backing into position. Just hold tension on both sides so that you get it pretty flat. And now we can start cranking down. We're just gonna wrap that forward. I'm gonna start pulling it up because we are gonna put some dumbbell eyes that we wanna have the backing out of the way for that. So we're gonna start pulling this forwards and then we're gonna wrap backwards right over the top of it. Trim the backing off. Next up we're gonna do, I've got my hair clip. With any of these articulated flies that I tie, I like to use these hair clips to hold the hooks to the arm. That really helps me from grabbing my finger and going to the ER. So we've got that tied in, we're gonna use the hair clip. I'm just gonna help clip this back. Keep all that out of the way for our next step. Next up is we've got some Palmer chenille. So we're gonna tie this in. Really kind of helps give a cool uh, belly to the sculpin. You know how uh, sculpin are kind of teardrop shaped. It really helps show that kind of fat front end and then the tail is gonna be skinnier. Go ahead and do a half hitch. So we're gonna tie this on. Just a few wraps. We're definitely not gonna go very far up this shank with this stuff. Just about there. So now that we've got that flash in, we're gonna take the brush and just make sure it's all nice and untangled. Perfect. This part's pretty tricky, making sure, trying to get the right tension on the thread, because if when we go to tie this uh, zonker strip down, if you get too much tension on it, then your, your hook is gonna be loose. So, uh, or if you get too much tension on the thread, and not, or on the uh, backing and not enough on the zonker, then you're gonna have this big hump in it. So, uh, best thing to do is keep a lot of tension pulling backwards on that hook, Make sure you're not grabbing any of the zonker. Make sure it's just on the hook and lay it down on top. Get it a little tight, not super tight. And then if you put tension here on your front finger, you'll kind of see what it's going to do. There we go. So where you've got that tension at, take that bodkin. Just like we did at the rear of the hook, we're going to just get down to the leather. I like to tie the leather in and try to leave all of the hair out of it that I can. And just check your work again with that same technique where you pull hard this way and then push hard on this finger. We see that the everything's pretty straight, the zonker's not curved, and the backing's not curved. couple good thread wraps right here. Now we're just
just gonna wrap over the top of that. So the next step is we're gonna add in some dumbbell eyes. Again, I like these flies to make sure that they're riding hook point up. So I like to add dumbbell eyes just like a clouser. So the eyes are gonna go on the underneath side of the fly so that the hook is on the top of the fly. So we're gonna take a dot of super glue. Trim just a little bit of this flash out of my way. It's about time for a new uh, tube of super glue there. Just like you tie in your dumbbell eyes, I like, I'm going to tie these in with a couple cross wraps, a couple X wraps, and then two or three good wraps down at the base of them to just lock everything in. Next, we're going to make a rope with zonker. So, pull some thread out. We're going to put our finger about halfway where we want that loop to be, or a dubbing loop, or dubbing rope, however you want to say it. Create that loop. We're just going to work that forwards. And I'm going to half hitch at the front. So next, you just grab another... Uh, piece of your zonker here. Same technique, I'm just going to brush it out, get all those loose fibers. See we're pulling quite a bit of hair out of it. If you're super thrifty, you can save that stuff and just use it as dubbing. Make some of your own dubbing blends. We're going to just, it'll take you a little while of doing these to kind of gauge how much hair you're going to need to make uh, the rope for however long you're going to need it to be. but. I'm going to use about that much. We're going to find the leather down below it and cut it right there. I have a hook that I like to use. Uh, some people have dubbing spinners, but I like the, uh, the hook method. We're going to grab that, that leather and pull the hair backwards. That really helps make it stand up on end. Then we're going to insert that leather piece into the loop that we just built and center it up. We're going to come in and trim it out. Use uh, your sharpest, best pair of scissors for this so that you don't uh, have that zonker strip moving around on you. Now we can take our fingers and kind of work that hair and get it nice and even. So the longer you push these fibers this way from the butts, the longer your, your brush is going to be. So you can also taper your brushes this way. There we have it, so now we're just going to start spinning. Take your brush. Just come in and brush. Just be careful not to grab that thread that you use to make your rope with, but just try to grab these loose fibers and run it up and down where you brushed, and that'll really help kind of pick this rope out so that it's a little puffier. There we have it. And we're just going to start wrapping forwards with this brush. Get 
right behind those eyes. Now we're gonna make an X pattern through the eyes. Now we're just gonna wrap over the top of them. And just kind of keep pulling that hair rearwards. as you get those next wraps on top of it. Now we're gonna tie this down. We've got, currently our thread is sitting in front of the zonker rope. So we're gonna go behind it. I like to tie it in probably twice back here. Two good wraps behind it will do for now. Now we're gonna come in and just cut this out close. Again, this we're having a really sharp, nice pair of scissors or a razor blade is good. Pull all that rearwards and get just a couple more thread wraps to help lock all that in there. And last, we're just gonna whip finish right on the top. Back to the brush, we're gonna brush this head out. Guys, it's a pretty simple streamer pattern. All we really used was a little bit of zonker and some type of palmering flash. Of course, you could use standard flashaboo and just uh, wrap it as well, but um, those are the only two things we needed for this fly. I like this one a little more than the Sculperino just because it does ride hook point down with those eyes and keeps that tail high. But uh, give them some shots. You can, of course, tie the tail and the flash and the head in different colors. Um, tie some up show us what you think what you like i like to fish these pretty early season or when the fish just aren't chasing you know we always wish they would chase these big flies but unfortunately that's not true all the time so uh tying up some smaller little streamers this is about the smallest that i go on this fly uh but well that's really about the smallest i ever go on streamers to begin with but um that's a great little fly and i love this this uh cinchilla or grizzly zonker strip called a couple different things but uh really like that color it's great it can work on light days it can work on dark days it's kind of a great in between kind of a midpoint between a dark fly and a like light fly so one of my favorites we'd love to see what you guys come up with well guys if you liked watching this video please help us out subscribe to the channel like the video and then comment below what other color combos you you like to fish or comment below what other flies you'd like to see us tie Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the water. Pow. Pow! Why does he keep doing that?